Good morning. Pastor Ken and Charlotte here. Sure good to spend this time together. I want to talk to you this morning about being close to God. Closeness is a wonderful thing. When you feel close to your spouse or close to a friend, or even close to a pet. It really means you want to be near them in their presence, okay? You miss them when you're apart and want to be close to them when you're together. That's a friend of mine just got a new pup, new dog. Saw a picture of him, that beautiful dog, on his lap in a luxury chair. Well, that's why you get a dog to develop that companionship and that nearness and that closeness. That's why they call a dog, one of the reasons they call a dog a man's best friend. Now, we know that Jesus is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And, you know, love is such a broad word. It, it can cover anything from, uh, boy, I love this car. Honey, I love you. Uh, come here, Rover. You're a good old boy. I sure do love you. But when it comes to God, it is such a majestic thing. Like uh, what we're really saying is, God, I, I want to be near you. I want to be closer. It's... Uh, it's, it's a, first of all, it's an invitation. James chapter 4 and 8 says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Say, if, uh, come on, get close to me, God is saying. Come closer. People often tell me, I wish I felt closer to God. Well, do you see in this verse who takes initi initiative? It's uh, you and I. Draw near to God, he will draw near to you. Who takes the first move? I remember uh, many, many years ago, we had a couple couples that used to, uh, we'd get together and play dominoes. And uh, the one couple genuinely had a trouble staying focused. They worked hard. They 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 worked hard, and uh, they wanted to be close to us, so they would come over and uh, <clears throat> we sit around the table and play dominoes. But every time it would come their turn, we'd have to <laughs> we'd have to wake them up <laughs> and tell them <laughs> it's your turn. <laughs> you it's your turn to go. <laughs> and uh, it almost got to be a joke. One night, the uh, people that owned the house and we had gathered there. We were talking about it and kind of giggling about it. And they said something to the effect, if, if that happens tonight, we're just going to let them sleep. <laughs> and uh, you guys just get up and go home. And we're just going to go to bed and <laughs> leave them here and with the dominoes and let them sleep. <laughs> and uh, sure enough, that's exactly what happened. Our house was just down the road from this other couple's and we were in bed and just about asleep when we heard uh, their car leave. They finally got awake and <laughs> looked around the room. They're the only ones there. <laughs> Can you imagine there? It's your turn. It's your turn. It's your move. 
you need to be awake and put something into this if you want to draw close to God. It needs to be a priority. You make the first move. It's your turn. Go ahead and go. Well, initiative. Initiate. Uh, you make the first move. Things like reading your Bible, things like taking the time to talk to God, things like not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together as a manner of some is, Paul said. But so much the more we should get together with the believers uh, as the time goes. Uh, you get the, your theology straight and really uh, make big about Jesus and the cross and, and uh, make a place in your heart for the Holy Spirit to help you grow. The Holy Spirit intercedes for you, and he'll help you be closer to God. But you, you, you need to initiate. You need to initiate that. Start with just five minutes a day. Say, God, this time belongs to you. Now, it's an invitation. Come on. Come closer. The initiation is this. You make the first move. We look at salvation and relationship with the Lord many, many times like the Lord's doing it all. And definitely Jesus has paid the price for all of our sins, past, present, and future. But it takes a working out of our salvation with fear and trembling before the Lord and a desire to be in his presence, a desire, uh, desiring God. Uh, you know, if we would desire God like we desire our hobbies or our friendships with people, uh, you know, it, 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 it's a big deal to desire to God. And it says there, cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Uh, what a powerful verse. Did I tell you where that was in James 4, chapter 8? You ought to underline all that. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. He's talking about what you do. Your hands represent what you do. When you see feet mentioned in the Bible, it's usually talking about where you go. When you talk about lift up holy hands, it, it, it's talking about what you do. This is, represents what you do. And then he says, purify your hearts, you double-minded. Uh, he said, uh, what he's saying here, put your whole heart into it. God knows what's in your heart. Put, he's not, he's not looking for you to be perfect, really. He is, but I mean, he, you don't have to be per perfect to come to him. He's looking for the desire of your heart to stop being double-minded and come before him with a with a pure heart. Double-minded means um, like on Saturday, you do everything that the Bible says not to do, and then on Sunday, go to church and you know, it's it, it's kind of a double standard type of thing, and and uh, if you want to be close to God, God's not into hypocrisy. God's not into that double double thing. He's uh, he don't he won't play second fiddle to anything. He he wants all the honor and all the glory and all the praise. And um, okay, in the Old Testament, we're told a story about. A group of people building a tower. It was called the Tower of Babel or Babel. The goal was that they would reach into the sky and reach up to God by building this humongous high tower. You might call it a pyramid. And God come down and just spread them all over the world, gave them all different languages and 
and uh, did away with their tower because uh, that's not the way to get close to God. It, it, you can't work harder to get close to God, really. It's a matter of the heart and taking time to be in his presence. It's the essence of, a, of our worship, like bathing in his glory. This phrase comes to me right here when we're talking with this, and begin again. Don't tell me you haven't. Maybe you'd like people to think that you're spiritual and you have uh, gotten spiritual and you stay spiritual and you never have relapses and you never uh, have off days. And um, But the truth is that's, that's not the truth. Um, you have times of relapse when you need to um, cleanse your hands and, and purify your hearts. I remember boarding in a place uh, years ago when I was uh, 16 years old. And I was 2,000 miles from home and I was uh, away from home. And uh, one of the ladies, she was a single lady. Uh, she was literally a relation to the people that owned the home. And she had a compulsion to wash her hands. It's a wonder she didn't wash the skin right off of them because she just, every time we turned around, she was washing her hands, wiping her hands, washing her hands, soap and water, washing her hands. She, she would do this hundreds of times a day. Barb, uh, you and Adrian will know who I'm talking about. Washing of her hands. There's a name for that, I guess. I, I don't even know. It's not important. But Jane says, wash your hands, cleanse your hands. Often I see signs say, you soap, get them germs off. They're talking about the pollution of sin. Get it off. Don't act like sinners. We're trying to be saints. And purify your heart, you double-minded. There's a narrow way and a broad way. Get on the narrow way and stay on the narrow way. Now, it seems to me this verse is saying, start again. Make a turn. Come back to doing it the right way. You get it? Let me read it again slowly. James 4 and 8. Draw near to God. He will draw near to you. That's a promise. This is how to do it. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Stop doing the things that displease God. That's just the only way I know to say it. Purify your heart, you double-minded. Don't let your heart become hard. You say, what are you talking about? Well, when when you could sin or when I can sin and it doesn't hurt us or cause us to be under conviction, we're uh, we're pretty much double minded there. We need to be single minded and get our focus. It's a good time to talk about focus when we're uh, it's deer hunting season down here in Pennsylvania. Well, it is in many places of the United States and uh you have to stay focused. If you're using binoculars, you got to get them focused in. Uh, people shoot their rifles in, get it focused, you know, at 100 yards and 200 yards. Um, get her focus on God and take the initiative today to get closer. To the, just come around and say, God, I really want to experience closeness with you. And then look at your hands and look at your heart. And then cry for help like a drowning man in the sea. Peter, keep your eyes on Jesus. 
He'll show up. God will show up. I promise you. Maybe not in a physical way, but in a spiritual way, he'll show up. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, your son, there are people that are listening this morning that really need to experience a closeness to you. They feel lonely. They feel deserted. They feel cold-hearted. They feel like it's mechanical. But down in their heart, they really are crying out, I want to be closer to God. I pray that this message, this, this verse, then this message will be a help to them today. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. God bless you. Have a great day. Keep that smile going. It's important. God bless.